Greetings to everybody watching this rather special broadcast. Today we are doing a series of lessons in order to help you who are serious to improve your English results when you are taking it as a first additional language. Now there you'll see on the screen, um, I've started by saying in the bottom, using logic and common sense to improve results. And a great deal of this might seem obvious to you, but well, let's just see how true that is. We're going to start not with paper one or paper two, but with paper three. And there's a reason for that. Let's take a look at how the exams are structured and how the final points are calculated. And this will also explain to you why I regard paper three as the most important one. So here you will see I've prepared a list of the English first additional language examinations. Please note that they are slightly different from the home language ones. Let's start with paper one. Paper one consists of a comprehension test, first a text, normally out of 24 marks, and then a visual literacy comprehension out of six marks to give you a total of 30. Summarizing, which we shall also be looking at later, as well as comprehension tests, 10 marks, which can make an amazing difference to your score, by the way. And then, of course, you have the language and visual literacy component out of 40 marks, giving you a total of 80 marks. That is an important exam. Going on to paper two, we have the literature paper. The literature paper is basically two genres, 35 for the one and 35 marks for the other. Most of the people in um, the schools in the Free State, I know, are doing the drama and the short stories. That's the most common choice. So we'll focus on that a bit later as well, but not to the same extent as the paper three, and here's why. Take a look here. The essay alone in the paper three is out of 50 marks. That makes it a very high priority. And then, of course, you've got your longer transactional writing out of 30 and your shorter transactional writing out of 20. This is why we are beginning with the paper three today. As far as I'm concerned, that is the most important paper by far. Let's move on slightly and take a look at exactly what we are going to address. First, there are five or possibly six types of essays. You should know this. You have been taught the majority of them in your classrooms, seeing that you are now in grade 12 and watching this in order to get exam hints. So let us run through those types of essays. And I'm going to give you a brief task if you would like to do it. But let's take a look. First, you have narrative, you have descriptive, you have argumentative, you have discursive, you have reflective. Those are the five that are in the curriculum. However, you also have expository. Now, it's been taken out of the curriculum, but if you do write an essay which is based on expository principles, it will be valid. Please take note of that. Now, I'm going to give you a brief test. I'm going to ask you to provide definitions of those six essay types. This is not to re-educate you or anything. It's just to make you think and think back over your school career, which is now soon going to be ending, and make sure that you know what the requirements of these specific essays 
are. So let me go forward. I'll just remind you it's narrative, descriptive, argumentative, discursive, reflective, and expository. Can you provide definitions for each of these essay types? And I've made a note there. Note that there are multiple correct answers possible for this. Almost always, not always, but usually, um, it is possible to write more than one type of essay on a specific topic. And we are going to look at that in a bit of detail shortly. But in the meantime, let's give you a chance to provide those six definitions. Now, if you are doing this very seriously, I'd like you to hit the pause button on this video right now. And once you've done that and written down your answers, you can continue. OK? So pause now. Good. In the meantime, let's start taking a look at our answers. A narrative essay. It is telling a story. You see my definition there? Um, basically, the narrative essay is the safest essay to write. Everybody knows how to tell a story. It's not difficult. It's something that is ingrained into us from a very young age. So really, if you want to pick a safe topic, pick a narrative topic. You really can't go wrong with that. Okay, now let's move on. Oh, sorry, just before we move on, I've made a note here, written in the first person, that's I, we, me, us, and the past tense. That is your classic narrative essay. And I would advise you, if you choose a narrative type topic, stick to those principles. It's what you did and experienced. And it's in the past tense because it's already being done. Right, now let's move on. One of my favorites, descriptive. It's describing people, places, places, emotions. That's uh, the notes that I've made. But the whole thing about this is how do you describe people or places or emotions or vehicles or food or whatever it is you're describing? Well, you are going to need to use adjectives. Yes, definitely. Adjectives are, after all, words that describe nouns. Then you've got adverbs. And although we're going to look at parts of speech in a bit of detail later, let me stress this. The adverb qualifies or modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. So those are, in fact, the most useful of your parts of speech in a descriptive essay. And then finally, of course, you have here figures of speech. Please note that, figures of speech. We all know what figures of speech are. Parts of speech are types of words. There are eight in English. We'll go into that later. We're going to be tackling that when we look at paper one. Figures of speech are, of course, your poetic non-literal language. We all know the classic ones. You've got the simile, you've got the metaphor, you've got personification. But there are so many other figures of speech which are easy to use, and all you have to do is slip them into your essay, and immediately your language mark is going to go up. You'll see why I say this when we look at the rubric a bit later, the rubric with which an essay is marked tells you how to write the essay. And one of the things that you should try to use is figurative language. Not just in a descriptive essay, by the way. Figurative language can be used in basically any essay that you write, any type. So when you learn your figures of speech, it's not only to answer questions during your paper two. Figures of speech are useful because it's, if you use them, if you understand how to use them, it's going to really boost your marks for paper three, specifically in your essay. Let's move on. 
Argumentative. So what is an argumentative essay? It's giving your opinion on a topic. Now please note, I did not use tautology here. Tautology is when you use an unnecessary word or words. If I were to say, giving your personal opinion on a topic, I would be using tautology. And that is another thing you must avoid in your essays, by the way, is tautology. Unnecessary words, we just shouldn't be there in the first place. Obviously, if it's your opinion, it is personal. So for me to put the word personal in there and would be tautology and would be a mark against me were I to be writing an essay using that combination of words. Now, we go further. Presenting one side of an argument. And of course, because you are presenting your opinion, your side, your point of view, it is subjective. Now, the other thing to remember about an argumentative essay, it must be persuasive. You are attempting to get the marker to agree with you. Now, do you notice how I say the marker as opposed to the reader? Well, actually, the two are the same thing. But remember, it's your essay is going to be marked by a person. People, of course, like to enjoy themselves while they are marking. This is because we are normal human beings. We like to enjoy what we are doing. And therefore, a well-written essay, of course, is going to improve your marks because the marker will respond positively to it. Okay, so now, remember that you are being persuasive. You have to use logic and reasoning to make a person agree with you. Let, let's move on at that point. Enough about argumentative. Discursive. Presenting both sides of an argument. Now, note, balanced. Balanced. Okay? It mustn't be sort of in favor, but generally against it must be level, all right? Objective, yes, it must be. Otherwise, it's not a truly discursive essay. And there I've just given you um, the example of the essays that I always give to my grade 11s when I teach them. It's always uh, a discursive essay starting with the advantages and disadvantages of. And there, at that stage, you can put any topic in there, mining is an excellent example. Um, mining, of course, has been the foundation of South Africa's economy. The economy of South Africa built on mining, all right? Major employer of hundreds of thousands of people, underground and above ground. Okay, so tremendous benefit to the economy in many different ways. But mining, of course, causes huge um, environmental degradation. Right? You've got your acid mine uh, um, drainage, which is currently threatening the entire uh, province of Gauteng. And you've got huge mine dumps, and you've got, naturally enough, injuries. All right? Lots of um, death and um, injuries underground it does happen. But the point is, you see that it's balanced. It's the advantages of mining, yeah, many. The disadvantages, many. We can't do without it, and it's, but it's a problem having it. Okay, discursive, both sides. Reflective, looking back on an event or experience and thinking about lessons learned or changes that have occurred. A reflective essay very often um, overlaps with a narrative essay. But if you are doing a reflective essay, um, you must make sure that you include those other details. Have you learned something from the experience? What has changed? What were you like before? What were you like afterwards? Was this some sort of life-changing event? Or was it a major event in the history of South Africa? Often when I, I set reflective topics, I will get back the death of Nelson Mandela. Because at that point, yes, 
The history of South Africa changed substantially. So it is actually a valid one, that. But don't please um, copy that particular idea. Please make sure that you have your own original topics and that the topic is addressed. But we're coming to that when we look at this in more detail. Now, finally, expository. This is what I'm doing today. I'm presenting a lesson. We are informing, explaining, clarifying. Okay, those three things. Providing new information, explaining the new information, and then going into even further detail. Okay, now, a few other things which I want to add before we go on. I'm going to hold something up to the camera. You will probably know what it is. This is a cell phone. And cell phones for teachers have always presented problems in the classroom. Why? Well, if abused, they can be a tremendous distraction. But my thoughts on that have changed completely. With a cell phone, you can find almost any information you want. When you are trying to search for specific information regarding English or any other topic, this is such a wonderful tool. I am certain if you are watching this, you have a smartphone, you have Google, and Google is going to be one of your most useful tools when preparing for your exams. So, don't be shy to use this. There is a movement, as I speak, to encourage the use of cell phones in the classroom. And I think that it's an excellent movement, and it's way overdue. You know, we teachers hate anything that may possibly cause a disruption or some sort of problem which we then have to sort out later. And in the old days, when the cell phone was just for communication, that was a valid sentiment. But now, you are sitting with the most fabulous research tool in your pocket. Use your data wisely. Now let's move on slightly and let us take a look at a quick task. For each topic, identify what types of essays could be written to address it. Note that in each case there is more than one correct answer. Actually, the statement I've made there, according to the memorandum for this paper which you're about to um, see, says that in some cases there is only one essay type permitted. So, well, let's see who's correct. Now I'm going to go across to the essay. This is last year's prep exam. Let's take a look at this. Right, and we'll go through it in some detail. Take a look here. There we are. This is the Free State prep exam of 2016, paper three. There we go. Now note, marks 100, you know that already. Time, two and a half hours. Chances are you've got plenty of time to write this. But I'm going to give you a few more tips as well so that you don't run out of time. It does sometimes happen. Okay, let's take a look here. Now, because most people never bother to read the instructions, we'll read it now together quickly. What do you say? Good. Three sections. <coughs> Excuse me. Essay, longer transactional, shorter transactional. There's your mark allocation. You've seen that already. Answer one question from each section. If you are silly and answer more than one, of course, only your first answer will be marked and you will simply waste time. Write in the language in which you are being assessed. Um, please remember that is actually a critical instruction. It's very tempting. Because English is difficult, because most people struggle with English, it is tempting to slip in one or two words of your own home language and leave them there. <laughs> Don't do it. Stick to English if you are writing in English. 
start each section on a new page. Now, people, please, I'm sure by this stage, at your schools, you have seen an exam book. It's got 24 pages on which you can write. That's a lot of pages. Don't worry, start each section on a new page. And what's more, do your planning. Each section of planning should be on a page by itself. You are not going to fill up that book. And if you do fill up that book, don't worry. The invigilator will give you another one. So don't be shy to use space. Don't be shy to start on a new page, each section that is. Good? Now, planning, point five, planning. It says here, plan, edit, and proofread your work. Right, now, planning. It says here, mind map, diagram, flowchart, keywords. I am not in favor of mind maps, and we're going to look at this um, in a few minutes. I like to plan paragraph by paragraph. For me, that works best. And to most of the people that I've shown this, it works best for them also. Unfortunately, uh, I'm assuming that you are already um, in grade 12. You have already written your mid-year papers. The two papers that are facing you now are the prep exam, uh, which will be written um, in September, and the final exam, which is going to be written in November. So whatever planning style you have already selected, stick to that. Don't copy mine. If, however, you are in grade 10 and you're watching this, which is a good idea, change your planning technique. <laughs> I'll show you how to do it shortly. OK, now note this also. The plan must appear before the answer. All right. So your plan must come before your essay. A lot of people, they write the essay and then put the planning as an afterthought after the essay. And then they say, look, but I, I did planning. There it is. That's silly. The planning is not so that the examiner can see it and give you a tick or the marker, I should say. The planning is there to guide you through the writing of your essay. So plan properly. And funnily enough, you're going to save a lot of time because you don't have to stop and think after every sentence. You've already planned the structure of your essay. Now, going on slightly, all planning must be clearly indicated as such. That is really important. Please, people. Often, I have seen papers where I could, I just wasn't certain where the planning stopped and where the actual essay began. So, please, you must actually say planning above your planning. And above your final copy of your essay, you must write there, final neat copy. It makes it so much easier for the marker. I would also, now this is going to sound strange to those of you who have not heard this said before. When you are writing your essay, I do not recommend that you do a draft. Plan, yes. Plan thoroughly, yes. It then makes a draft unnecessary. You can, after all, edit on your final neat copy. There's no rule that says you can't do that. And honestly, it's one of the questions that I'm most frequently asked. Must I do a draft? And the answer is, you may, but you don't have to. One of the nastiest things that I've seen. I mark these paper threes most years. And it's so depressing to see somebody who has done a draft, planning, draft, final copy. The final copy is no more than the draft copied out word for word. And what happens as a result? The rest of the paper does not get finished. One and sometimes two of the transactional pieces are not written. So while I do advise you strongly in favor of planning, yes, I also advise you strongly against drafting. However, if 
<coughs> you find that drafting is helpful to you. And if you write quickly, because I do not write quickly. If you are a fast writer and the draft will make a difference to you, by all means, go ahead and use it. But it is not a requirement for marks. The drafts are not marked. Planning is not marked. It is merely ticked. The uh, marker will tick it to show that it's been seen. But you don't have to do a draft. OK, let's see what else we've got here. The following time frames as a guideline, yes. Um, this is based on the theory that you are going to use the full two and a half hours. Now, I don't know how your school works. Different schools have different policies regarding exams. Some schools say that you go in there, you sit down, and you write for the full two and a half hours, and you may not leave before those two and a half hours are finished. Now, two and a half hours for you mathematical types, you'll know that that's 150 minutes <coughs> to excuse me. And of course, if you add 80 and 40 and 30 minutes together, you will get 150 minutes. And that is a very good guideline. So if you take these instructions seriously, stick to that and you can't go wrong. If, of course, you finish your work to your own satisfaction faster than that, fine, great. Then you've scored. Then you have no uh, worries. Now, number each response as the topics are numbered in this question paper. Please include, especially with the essays, if you choose something like a response to one of the pictures, please put the number of that question there. Often, I've seen papers where we're not too sure which topic is actually being addressed. So that can cost you marks. Please make sure that you include both the number and the title above, first, your planning, and second, your final neat draft of your essay as well. The more the merrier, it's just to make life easier for the marker. And remember, what does a happy marker do? A happy marker gives you more marks because the work is enjoyable. OK, moving on down here. Write down the title or heading of each response. Give your own title or heading if one has not been provided. And that is why the numbering is so important, so that we can know exactly which topic is being addressed. And then note the title heading must not be included when doing a word count. Word count. Do word counts. Please, 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 I cannot stress this enough. The purpose of the word count is not for the marker. The purpose of the word count is so that you can ensure that you have not gone over the maximum limit. Now, you're in grade 12, you're writing an FAL paper. The word um, limit for an essay is 300. Now, in the marking centers, the markers are instructed to count the number of words, and when they reach 300, they cross out what comes after that. Now, if that happens to you, you lose the conclusion of your essay, and your marks will plummet. Therefore, I say, it is critical to do an accurate word count. Do not go below 250. Do not go past 300, or you are going to damage your own results. Please take note of that. And then, of course, the final one, write neatly and legibly. And I'd like to assure you just how important that is. And I speak as one who has marked essays where I've had to dismantle each individual word into its component letters to try to make sense of it. Um, well, talking about writing neatly and legibly, I haven't brought one along this morning, but you'll see I am carrying medium point pens. Now, the ideal when you're writing your essay, the ideal is to write with a blue medium point pen. 
all right? But a black one is also permitted. Why do I say medium point? Well, fine point pens, and I don't have one on me, fine point pens leave a much thinner, fainter line. And marking centers are, well, basically just in schools. The school facilities are used. Um, the English first additional language papers tend to be marked in school halls where there is plenty of space because there are over, in the Free State, there's over uh, 20,000 candidates writing these papers. So you need a lot of space and a lot of markers to make their way through all those papers. It's a lot of work. And school halls, unfortunately, are not always well illuminated. If you are using a fine point pen, it makes it more difficult for the marker to actually read what you have written. So please make sure, if at all possible, that you are using a medium point pen which leaves a much darker, clearer line on the paper. Now, let's go to our essays. All right, and here we are. Once again, we'll go through the instructions. Question one, essay, right. And we've got here, write an essay of between 250 to 300 words in length. You see that? The word limit is specific. Stick to it. On one of the following topics, yes. Write down the number and title of the essay chosen. For example, 1.1, your past is just a story. Give your own title if your choice is question 171 or question 172, right? Spend approximately 80 minutes on this section. We have already seen that. Now let's put our, six, our first six topics on the board. We'll look at the response to the visual stimuli in a few minutes. And here are your six topics. Now, just before we go on, I'm going to give you a reminder of what I'm asking you to do. For each topic, identify what types of essays could be written to address it. Note that in most cases, <laughs> I am corrected there, there is more than one correct answer. Right, let's go back and take a look at these topics. Here we are. The first. 1.1, your past is just a story. 1.2, social media comments should be protected by free speech. Do you agree? 1.3, schools emphasize mathematics and physical science too much. Practical subjects where learners could be taught a skill should be prioritized. Discuss your views. 1.4. Every time I see you, I am more convinced that we belong together. Mm. <laughs> 1.5. Life is the most difficult examination I ever faced. 1.6. Part of you dies each year when the leaves fall from the trees and their branches are bare against the wind and the cold wintry light, but you know there will always be spring. Now there we have six different topics. If you are serious and you are going to take part in this exercise, hit the pause button now and see precisely what you can come up with. I hope you have done so. Right. Now, let's take a look at our answers. We'll start with, your past is just a story. And I think for this, it will be necessary to look at the memorandum. Okay. So now, give me a second here. I'm going to try to find, there we are. There's our memo. Here is the paper which tells you how to mark this paper. Okay, and we go to here. Your past is just a story, and it says here, can be a narrative essay, yes, can be, can be a reflective essay, can be a descriptive essay, and here we have some 
interesting little comments written below, if narrative. The essay must have a storyline, usually written in the past tense. See that? Past tense. The essay must have an interesting ending. Yes, that is critical, and we're going to look at that also in more detail quite a lot later. If reflective, the essay should convey emotional reactions and feelings experienced by the speaker. Yes, in the context of that title, your past is just a story, that is certainly valid. If descriptive, the writer should create a picture in words, trying to use as many senses as possible to make the description clear. Okay, what are your five human senses? You have five. Yes, that's right. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. Those are your five senses. And if you can bring as many elements of those into your essay as is humanly possible, your essay will improve. Remember um, also that if you can do it by using figures of speech, it's going to be much better. Good. Now, number two, or 1.2, I should say. Social media comments should be protected by free speech. Do you agree? Now, according to this answer, argumentative. It's supposed to be an argumentative essay. And that is certainly the most logical of the topics to present here. Could you make it discursive? Well, it's a risky thing when it says, do you agree, to then say, yes, I agree partially or only, or you see, this is why I don't agree, da, 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 but this is why I do agree. Um, stick to, if it says, do you agree, either yes or no, <laughs> which is argumentative. And here it actually says in the memo, the essay must offer one distinct opinion. Therefore, the essay must either be for or against the topic given. You see that? There should be a clear defense or motivation or argument of the position taken. And that is where sometimes we run into troubles. Is that um, I recently marked an essay which was very well written. And obviously, the, uh, uh, the guy was uh, arguing strongly against a certain topic. But he was generalizing. And as soon as you generalize, you know, make sweeping statements like, um, everybody agrees that uh, uh, land reform in South Africa should be done through expropriation. No. Some people are of that opinion, but not everybody agrees with that. So watch out for generalization. Generalization does not give you a clear and logical reason to support your opinion. Okay. However, let's move on then. Good. Schools emphasize mathematics and physical science too much. Practical subjects where learners should be taught a skill should be prioritized. Discuss your views. Now, the giveaway to this one there is the word discuss. Obviously, if you are discussing, you are producing a discursive essay. Take a look. Okay. Discursive, yes. The essay must offer a balanced view of both sides of the argument. Remember what we said about our in our definition earlier? Balanced. All right? Um, objective. In other words, you're not stressing your own point of view. Opposing views must be presented impartially. All right? Um, you mustn't have a view one way or another. This is when you are basically presenting both sides of a debate. Okay, good. Oh, and look what we come up to now. The romantic one. Every time I see you, I am more convinced that we belong together. And I have seen romantic responses to that. But what really surprised me is the amount of responses which were original there and did not address romantic issues at all. I mean, there was one um, excellent essay that I read about this guy. Every time he walked past this car, he was more and more convinced 
that he was one day going to own and drive that car. It was an excellent essay. I got a lot of pleasure out of reading that. So let's see what it says here. Narrative, descriptive, or reflective. All right? Um, possibly the most obvious one in that case would be the descriptive. You'd go into detail about the member of the opposite sex to whom you are so attracted and, um, you know, details about why this person is so good to look at and personality, da 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 da, -da. Uh, that's the obvious one, and that's descriptive. Reflective? Yes. I wouldn't really um, address this as a reflective essay myself. Um, I would rather go for narrative or descriptive. But specifically, if I were to write this, I'd go for the descriptive aspect. And remember, lots of figurative language. Okay, for those of you who know the Bible, if you want real romantic um, writing, Go to the Song of Songs, otherwise known as the Song of Solomon. And uh, if you borrow from that, you don't have to plagiarize, but if you just take elements of that, it's some of the most romantic and well-written uh, descriptive stuff that I've ever seen. I really enjoy reading that book. Okay, now let's take a look. Again, narrative, da-da-da. It's the same as the, the uh, advice the last time. So we'll skip over that now. All right, and let's go on to 1.5. Life is the most difficult examination I ever faced. What do you think that one will be? Well, I can tell you that the statement made in that topic is certainly true as far as I'm concerned. But let us see what types of essays are predicted by the memorandum. See that? Reflective, narrative, descriptive, again. All right? Now, in this case, reflective would be the most obvious choice. Because, obviously, whoever is writing this is looking back at an experience or experiences of the past. So, um, if I were to write this, I would make it a reflective essay. But obviously, narrative or descriptive would be appropriate. Okay? And same comments, emotional reaction, storyline, etc., etc. Okay, we won't look at that in too much more detail. Let's go on to 1.6. And it's on the next page here. <laughs> okay, you've seen it already, so let's just put it up there. Part of you dies each year. <coughs> Excuse me. Part of you dies each year when the leaves fall from the trees and their branches are bare against the wind and the cold, wintry light. But you know there would always be the spring. Now this one, you see the first one they put there is descriptive. Yes, yes. That, if I were to write this, it would be a descriptive essay. However, reflective and narrative can also provide really good logical responses to this. So there we are, the same. Reflective or narrative can also be added, but, and any one of those three will provide a valid response. But now, there's a comment I want to make here. Um, always we get responses which are not according to the memorandum, but which are sometimes utterly brilliant, okay? How they get away with that, I don't know. Um, well, let's just take a look and see where we could fit in a, an expository essay. This, for example, life is the most difficult examination I ever faced, could definitely be used to write an expository essay um, for the simple reason expository is not too far removed from discursive the two do have overlapping components. And um, narrative, yes. Expository and narrative can overlap to a certain extent because you can use your own experiences um, to say what you learned from something like that. So don't be too shy and don't worry. The one thing about selecting your essay topic 
There's many things about it. But when you are writing your essay, as long as your essay addresses the topic, you must be credited accordingly. You will get a decent result as long as you address the topic. Now, bear with me. Before we go on to look at planning and all those nice little details, um, let's go back to our question paper and let's look at 1.7. And what does it say here? Choose one of the pictures on the next page and write an essay on a topic that comes to mind. Write the question number, 171 or 172, and give your essay a suitable title. Now note, your essay must be clearly linked to the picture you have chosen. That is what this is all about. Let's go then to our two pictures that we have here. Okay? 1.7.1. To me, that looks like a piece of technology from when I was very young. You see, I am proudly BBT, born before technology. And I actually had a clock similar to this one next to my bed when I was very young. This is what you call an alarm clock. <laughs> All right, so you've got your alarm things up there. There's the little hammer that goes dingy, 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 and bangs against the, the two miniature bells. And of course, there you've got the clock face, the big hand, and the little hand, and the second hand, and there's the little um, thing that you turn to set the alarm. Now, so that's what you have there. You will notice also, it would seem to me that the alarm clock is ringing because one leg is off the floor. Okay. Now the second one. Now that, to me, looks like barbed wire. And there's a hand stretching up and holding on to the fence. All right? So there are your two topics. Do you feel motivated to write something about this? Well, let's take a look. We'll go back to our memorandum and see what the memo has to say about this. Let's go on then to here. Interpretation of pictures. The candidate may interpret the picture in any way. Okay, so you've got broad scope to do this. The interpretation should be linked to the pictures. That's obvious. If it's not linked to the picture, you're going to get a terrible mark because then you're not addressing the topic. The candidate must give the essay a suitable title. Yes. The candidate may write in any appropriate tense. If, for example, you are deciding to create a narrative essay, it doesn't have to be in the past tense. It can be in the future perfect tense. It can be in the past perfect, whatever you want. As long as it makes sense, it can even be in the present tense. It's a difficult way, a method of writing an essay that but it's valid. Okay, then, the candidate may choose to write any type of essay. Okay, so we've got six different types. You've got your narrative, your uh, descriptive, your argumentative, your discursive, your reflective, and your expository. It can be any type of essay when you, it comes to addressing these pictures because here you have really a chance to... Let your imagination fly. Do what you want to. It makes no difference. Well, to within limits, obviously, you must address the topic. Good. Now, here, let's look first at 171. It says here, the literal interpretation. Okay? You've got time, technology, inventions, etc. Good. Yes. I would go for the, the whole thing about how technology has changed <laughs> if I were to write this. I'm fascinated by the advances in modern technology, being a BBT myself. And then you've got your abstract interpretation, you know, being controlled by time, the rat race in modern society, da 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 da. Or you could go into, uh, um, for example, the fact that the alarm seems to be ringing means that perhaps there's a warning that the time has come in the country to do something different or up to you. Use your imaginations. Then, of course, 
Um, 1.7.2, here we've got our barbed wire with the hand on it. The literal interpretation, um, and then you've got you know, imprisonment, fences, security, um, that would all be logical. And then the abstract interpretation once again, imprisoned by life, fear, safety, etc., etc. Yes, okay? The fact that uh, um, you know, we, all of us are forced to work and earn a living and we can't do what we want to and we can't return to nature and da 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 You can come up with good stuff there. Now, a comment that I'd like to make in this regard. The, <coughs> excuse me, this 1.7 section, the interpretation of the pictures, is a two-edged sword. It results often in the best of the essays. It can, however, also result in the worst of the essays. Because of that one element, there must be a clear link between the picture and the essay that you have written. Without that link, of course, it's topic not addressed and your results will plummet. And remember that the reason we are doing this today is to get your results up. And remember also the reason we have started with paper three and specifically the essay components of paper three is because this is what provides the best result. Okay, now let's go back slightly and we'll first go back to our uh, PowerPoint. Okay, there it is there. Oh dear, I've done something wrong, sorry. Us BBTs, there we go. Now, you've looked at, for each topic, identify what types of essays could be written to address it. There, we've done that. That's just to explain to you that really, as long as you've addressed the topic, the type is of fairly little consequence. Now, we come to essay planning. A critical component, this. Please take note. The ultimate test of planning. Can you give your planning to me and ask me to write the essay on your behalf? Okay, that's it. Use that to test yourself. You know, when I, when I teach my guys in the classroom, um, going back, I start this with them in grade 10. Can you, let's just say, um, you've had a, a, a lovely meal the night before. It was lots of uh, curried beans and you put extra chili sauce on it, uh, etc., etc. And now suddenly your stomach is upset. And you've suddenly got to run to the toilet. Can you now come to me and say, sir, 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 please, that's my planning. Write the essay for me. And that's what it's all about. Planning must be that good that somebody else can take it from you and write it. Incidentally, this happens in real life sometimes. Authors. Um, sometimes an author will plan a story, write it halfway, and then die. And somebody else will find what is a magnificent piece of penmanship and will then finish the book on his behalf because the planning is so thorough. And all you have to do is mimic the guy's writing style, and you might very well um, achieve a book that is exactly what the author had in mind when he first planned it. Now, let's move on slightly. Your planning should be detailed and precise and should not contain any questions. Why do I say should not contain any questions? Well. I get very irritated um, by some of the planning that I see, which doesn't tell you anything. You know, such as, let's, let's take a typical example, you know, your narrative essay and, um, you know, a, a school trip. And then instead of writing um, the destination of the school trip, um, they will write where we went. Why? Why? Did you go to... Or for other? Did you go to Kimberley? Okay, wait, I must come out of the Northern Cape. Um, but let's take a free state example. Did you go maybe to Koffiefontein? Or did you go to Jagersfontein? Or did you go to um, uh, Van Stadens Rus? 
Or did you go to Zastron? Or did you go to Smithfield? I mean, where? You don't say where we went. That doesn't form planning. Okay. Or the next one. Purpose of the trip. Well, what was the purpose of the trip? Was it a sports day? Or, you know, was it a, a debating contest? Don't write purpose of the trip. Tell me what the purpose was. That's what planning is all about. And that's why I say it should not contain any questions. Now, we mentioned this earlier. Now I'm stressing it. In an exam, your planning is not marked, so it does not have to be grammatically accurate. The only part of your paper that is marked is the essay, the long transactional, and the short transactional final neat copies. That's it. Planning, not marked. It's acknowledged, yes, the marker will acknowledge that the planning has been seen. But no, marker is not going to in any way find fault with your planning. So use your imagination, let your imagination run riot. If, if it's full of grammatical errors and spelling mistakes, who cares? It doesn't matter. Do it quickly. Not too quickly, but thoroughly, please. Okay, then, if, now I want to stress this also. If your planning is full and effective, then it is not necessary to write a draft, which is a rough copy, in an exam. Oh, just by the way, your final neat copy is not your final draft. It is your final neat copy. A draft is a practice copy, always. Okay? Well, we often get this in an exam. You will not be penalized if you write final draft, because we, we the markers, know, we understand what you mean. But... Um, I'm being technically accurate here. Your final neat copy is not a draft. Okay, now let's go back to the whole purpose of the sentence. If your planning is full and effective, then it is not necessary to write a draft. And remember that you don't have to write a draft. Again, I'm going to stress what we have already said. If you want to write a draft, you may do so. But you don't have to. It will not cost you any marks if you have not written a draft. Please take note of that. Now, let's go on slightly. And for a final little exercise, I'm going to show you the type of planning that I use. Now, once again, please, you don't have to plan it the way I plan it. But it would I'm sure, um, amuse some of you to see the method that I use. So the first thing we're going to do now is to see if I can navigate my way back through this electronic maze puzzle and get back to the question paper. There we are. So we've got our topics. And we can take a look at our topics. All right. So... Let me see which of these um, I am going to check. Well, let me randomly um, choose one. Uh, life is the most difficult examination I ever faced. All right? Uh, let's take a look at that. And now I'm going to start. And at this point, I'm going to switch on the document camera. If I can, I'm going to find the document camera so that you can see what it is that I am doing. Now, please note, here's standard lined paper. And here's a, I'm going to put it so you can see it. That is a black medium point pen. I would prefer to be using a blue one, but that will do. And let's go back then, just before we switch to DocuCam permanently, let's go back then to our topic. And the first thing I have to do is write um, 1.5, 1, 1 and I'm now writing the title out in my appalling handwriting. Life is the most difficult examination I ever faced. Nation, I ever 
faced. Right, I've done that. Now we can go back to DocuCam. You can see that I've now written the title out. And remember what I said, my handwriting is not wonderful, but it is legible. Good, now the first thing we must stress, you have to say this is planning. Right. Please note also the word planning is spelt with two N's, otherwise it is planing. Not that this is of major consequence in an exam, but it might make a difference to somebody somewhere. All right. Now what I've got to do is decide. I've got a maximum of 300 words. How many paragraphs can I fit into 300 words? Well, for me, it would be about five paragraphs, right? So let's do this. Now remember also that an essay must have an introduction and a conclusion. So I'm going to start by writing over here. Intro. And I'm going to count. One, two, three, four spaces, four lines open. And I then write... Paragraph 2. Remember, this is not going to be marked, so I can use abbreviations, whatever I want. 1, 2, 3, 4. Paragraph 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Paragraph 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And, well, we've got the space to do it. Let me include another paragraph. It's possible. Paragraph five. One, two, three, four. Conclusion. Right. So what is this all about? I'm going to start by um, putting in a few key points. What is this difficult examination? Well, um, the introduction would be, let's just say that I'm talking about how I um, went into business and the business was a failure. Okay, so intro. Uh, many years ago, failed business. All right, so that would be just setting a bit of background. The first one, um, starting the business, or paragraph two, I should say, starting the business, paragraph three, okay, while business was running, paragraph four, um, Problems begin. Okay, paragraph five. Business failed. And the conclusion. Okay. Um, lessons learnt. All right. <laughs> Trust nobody. <laughs> okay, but now, note, I've got there the structure of an essay. And more specifically, when we look at the, um, uh, the rubric with which this essay is marked, you'll see one of the most critical components is, of course, coherence. Coherence means that your essay must flow logically from the introduction to the next paragraph, to the next paragraph, to the next paragraph, to the conclusion. And the sentences also within the paragraphs must flow logically from one to the other. This method of planning gives you the best chance of how to ensure coherence. Now, we start filling in. You see how much space I've left. I always 
tell my guys to use a full page for the planning. Okay, um, then starting the business. Now, what type of business? Let's say bookshop. Bookshop. Okay. Um, used all my savings. Okay. Plus bank loan. Now you notice, not grammatically accurate or anything like that. Good. While business was running, um, initially successful. Um, good for, let's say, five years. All right. Problems began. Okay. Sales dropped. Um, lack of customers uh, struggled to pay staff. Okay, then business failed. Okay, ran out of capital, bank would not assist, closed. Good. Lessons learned. Well, I've said there, trust nobody, but would that be appropriate? No, I'm going to change that. Okay, I can do that. It's my planning. I can do what I want. Uh, lessons learned. Um, a few people still read. That's true, by the way. <laughs> In this country, the number of readers is going down all the time. Um, no demand for books. All right. Um, work for, no, scratch that. Um, become a teacher. More money in it. Okay, you know what we say? I only became a teacher because I want to get rich. Ha, ha, ha. But there we are. Um, very briefly, I have planned a, an essay. And I'm sure that for most of you watching, I could hand you this and say, please write the essay for me. Now, that concludes this particular lesson. This was all about the essay component of the most critical of the papers, and that is paper three. If you follow the advice given to you today, I guarantee you will improve your marks. And if I may quote from, you know, we mentioned the Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon, as it's sometimes called. Chapter two, verse 15. It says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that steal the grapes. It's the little foxes that steal the grapes. Pay attention to the small details, and you don't have to worry about the big ones. I'm going to say to you now, goodbye, and really, I hope that you found this lesson useful. Thank you.